Hey guys, Jake from GD Honey Acres here and stay tuned and I'll show you how I am going to do the inner cover. It's not as hard as you think. Let's get started. Alright, now I went ahead and wrote down all my measurements. We're going to actually use 2x4s for this. Um, we're going to have one 2x4 at 20 inches and one 2x4 at 16 and a quarter inches. Now, I thought ahead and went ahead and converted stuff to metric. So, you're going to have, well, I didn't do the 2x4s, but everyone should know what 2x4 is. 2 inch by 4 inch boards, actually one and a half inch by 3.5. But we're gonna have one of those at 50.8 centimeters and another one at 41.275 centimeters. All right, let's go ahead and cut those. Safety glasses first, always. Got them cut, let's go over to the table saw. All right, now our first cut, it's gonna be basically from the inside of the fence to the outside of the blade, kinda hard to see the blade. Here, can I do this, see that piece of wood? There's a blade, the space between the inside of the fence and the outside of the blade, I have it set to a quarter inch because I'm using quarter inch oak sheeting to do this. All right, let's get started. I've done before on other videos we're actually going to move the fence in is what I did is the fact that I cut right here now we're going to move the fence into the point where we get rid of this and it's always important to do both at the same time that way the depth is the same you don't got to worry about variation all right this thing you just kind of eyeball it get it real close to that blade Make sure your blade isn't going to touch it. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and do this. I did forget to mention that, I don't know why it's blaring so bad, sorry, let me do this real quick. I did forget to mention that my saw blade is up three quarters of an inch or 1.905 centimeters. Now, one thing you'll notice is I still have this feathery stuff, that's pretty easy just to break off, no problems. Let's go ahead and knock that off and if you have a little bit more you can take your knife and clean it up yeah comes off real easy right, i'm gonna get these cleaned up and then i'll be right back all right now i've got the saw blade up to where it's just above this two by four here so it'll cut all the way through the space i have between the fence and the blade is three quarters of an inch or like i said earlier 1.905 centimeters now, let's go and get cutting.
this is what you're going to get. Oops, sawdust on the lens. This is what you're going to get. Now, what we're going to do is kind of make a picture frame with them. And we cut an angle like this, 45, and then 45, and do that to all of them. All right, I got my miter saw set up to 45 degrees for the one angle. After I get them four cuts made, I'll basically just switch it back this way and do the other angle. Not too hard. Let's get started. Basically here, I'm going to put the blade, kind of hard to see, let me get in that light, block that light there. Okay, I'm going to put the blade right on this corner and cut 45 this way. Let's get started. You know, it might help if I plug it in first, huh? Just a little bit. All right, now let's get started. All right, guys, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened, why the video just stopped. I don't, I'm not sure. But we got all our angles cut, kind of like a picture frame you would do, you know? So it's gonna go together nice, like an out of 90. Basically, you cut them all the one way, then you flip it back to 45 degrees the other way and make them final cuts. All right, let's go back over to my table and we'll start assembling this. All right, we got our pieces laid out here, basically in the same shape as a picture frame. Now you can see the divots that we cut out the table saw earlier, and that's where we're gonna put our board down That'll fit perfectly. I mean, then we'll use staples to put those together. But to put the pieces together and secure them, I'm gonna go ahead and use my brad nailer, and some Type Bond 3. I keep bringing the Type Bond 3 up. It's because I love this stuff. It's still, it's freaking awesome. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put this one. Now, like I keep saying, make sure you always have your fingers a safe distance from the nail. Now you probably don't need to, but I do multiple nails in there just to make sure it stays good. Because in all reality, your big support is going to be coming from all those uh, staples that we're going to put into this. Dabby dab there, a little bit right there. Now it helps if you could have like a jig already made up for this, but I don't. I really don't care because this is pretty simple to do. Now, if I was going to make, I don't know, a whole bunch of these. I would probably go ahead and make the jig. Just because. It'd be a heck of a lot easier in the long run. Let's go ahead and put a couple more nails in it. Just like that. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Remember I say keep your fingers away? That's why. These Breton nails have been known to Veer like that. Now let me grab a set of pliers real quick and I'll pull that out. I actually, one time, had a brad nail go through one board. And you'll go completely through that board, right? And then guess what? It shot me in the leg. Now granted, it went through a board and through a pair of jeans before it got me in the leg. Doc said it only went in about an inch. These are two inch brad nails that I'm using. So I couldn't find it after it went into my leg, but really no biggie. I went to the urgent care 
the following day and they x-rayed it all for me just to make sure that I uh, didn't have a brad nail in there. Went up and down my whole leg, didn't find nothing, just some bruised muscle and such. I mean, they x-rayed it, x-rayed it, front, back, side to side, a couple different angles, just to make sure I was good to go. And I sure was. Oh, by the way, this piece here, I already cut it last night. I just used my circular saw, you know, made a mark here, went down with the circular saw, made a mark here, went across with the circular saw. No big deal, you could probably also do that on the table saw just as easy. But here's the dimensions for this. From here to here, it's 14 and 5 eighths inches or 31.15 centimeters. From here to here, it is 18 and 7 sixteenths or 46.83 centimeters. Now I will put all these dimensions in the description when I get the video uploaded. It should fit pretty snugly. Just like that, like a glove. Now we're gonna go through, I've got half inch staples in this. Make sure all your brad nails are out. I screwed up this last night. I had like two brad nails in there and I ended up stapling one down to my plywood top here. That was a pain in the butt to get off. But half inch staples work great. stopped recording while that compressor was running. Sorry for that if it ruined any of y'all's ears if you got earphones in or earbuds, whatever. I went ahead and grabbed these pieces that we cut these uh, side pieces off for the inner cover here. I'm gonna set it there and set it here because I'm gonna drill a hole in here. Now the reason I am going this big of one, big of a hole saw, is because I've got a bunch of these jars of this same size lid. I'm going to be doing my feeding probably a quart at a time and just put it here, put another box on top, and then all my, probably my telescopic cover. Just like that. That's how I'll feed. So I'm going to drill a hole for that. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it in the center. You can go ahead and measure if you want to. I don't really feel like it's that important for me to do so. like that then it'll sit like that with another box on here and telescopic cover all right hopefully this video helped you out maybe gave you some ideas of your own and how you might want to make your inner covers if you make them like this awesome glad I could help you if you like this and it helped you out spark some ideas give me a thumbs up subscribe subscribe to the video sorry and uh, when I go and make my telescopic covers, I'll make a video of that too. But yeah, here's that inner cover. And I just use regular old 2x4 for these pieces. And then oak sheeting for this. Fairly simple to make, but uh, yeah. Um, some people actually will make these pieces using a router table. I don't have one yet. That's why I use the table saw. And that's why I saw it done that way in the video. All right, guys, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll catch y'all later, and uh, God bless.